I will come again and receive you unto myself. Where I am, there he may be also. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. Whoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in the heavens, not made by the hands of man. For if we live, we live unto the Lord and if we die we die to the Lord so then whether we live or whether we die we are the Lord's my sheep hear my voice and I will know them and they will follow me I give them eternal life they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. For God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. When the perishable put on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying which is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live again. And anyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? In the path of righteousness, and in the pathway there is no death even though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me there is a season and a time for everything season for every activity under the heavens a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to uproot a time to kill and a time to be healed a time to tear down and a time to build a time to weep and a, and a time to laugh time to mourn and a time to dance come to me all ye who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your soul for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come on, let's lift it up. Uh -huh. 
Let's open up our mouth and sing.
This is the hour for family, for those of you that are greeting the family during this time. Amen. As we will prepare to officially start at 11 o'clock. Amen. So at this time, a, you may take time to go and greet the family. We ask that you please leave your mask on if you're going to greet the family. Amen, church? Hallelujah. Period.
సామాన్యాన్ని బోధించే సామాన్యము కలిగి ఉండాలి అంటే దైవ చిన్నగా కొన్ని అనుభవాలు కూడా మనం ముందుకు వెళ్ళాలి
this concludes our family hour let us put our hands together for Jesus great is the Lord and he is greatly to be praised hallelujah hallelujah and mother was here I could, I could hear her say Jesus said it Jesus said it scripture said it Jesus said it scripture said it
stand in the house of the Lord. Father, here we are today in the homegoing service of your servant. Lord, many of us want to praise you. Many want to give you the glory. But we got stuff in us, God, that's prohibiting us from reaching heaven. So Lord, right now, all together on one accord, for you said we've all sinned and fallen short of your glory. Lord, we all humble ourselves before you. And we ask that you would forgive us on today. Forgive us for every word, every action, every attitude that's not lined up with your word. Lord, forgive us for all of our sins on today. Lord, this was a servant of the Most High God. And she believed in truth and reality. And Lord, the truth and reality is that some of us don't like each other. But we need your help today, God. And Lord, we ask that you would wash us in the blood of the Lamb. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we don't understand one another. But you understand us. And God, we today say we because none of us are without sin today. But Lord, we thank you for the blood of Jesus that is able to wash us and to purge us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we know that her body is here, but her spirit is before you, worshiping and praising your name, crying holy, holy, holy. And Lord, today we ask in the mighty, miraculous name of Jesus that you will prepare us to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. Lord, we want to see mother again. Lord, we want to see the host of your people that have gone on before us. And God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we fall on the rock today. That the rock not fall on us. Lord, you are the potter and we are the clay. Lord, we ask that you would break us and make us after your will. Lord, save us all over again. Deliver us all over again. We need a touch from you, Lord. Lord, we need you right now. You've seen us in our secret place. You've seen our very faults. But God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we're asking that you will wash us today. Wash our mind today. Wash our will today. Wash us in our emotions today. Lift up the bereaving heart. Lord, look on those that are wounded, that are hurting on the inside. Help them to lift up their heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting God, that the King of glory can come in. God, we say yes, yes to your will, and yes to your way. Oh, God, we've been disobedient for the things that Mother told us to do. Some lied, some prevailed, some didn't obey, but oh, Lord, look on those that she prayed for in the midnight season, saying, Lord, save, Lord, deliver in your name. Oh, God, look on those that are tired of church folk. Look on those that are tired of religiosity. Give them 
hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for going back again to prepare a place for us. And we know you're on your way. Help us, God. Help us, God. Help us to be ready. Now, devil, we find you. The blood, the blood, the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood. We find division. We find schisms. We find unforgiveness. The blood, the blood, the blood. The blood of Jesus. The blood. Testament scripture from Pastor Anthony Estes. <laughs> Our Old Testament scripture today, the book of Psalms chapter 46, the Bible gives us this intelligence. God is our refuge and strength of every present help in trouble. Therefore will we not fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof There is a river The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God The holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High God is in the midst of her she shall not be moved God shall help her and that right early the heathen raged and the kingdoms were moved he uttered his voice and the earth melted the Lord of hosts is with us the God of Jacob is our refuge come behold the works of the Lord what desolations 
he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the ends of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Amen. The New Testament lesson is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord wherefore comfort one another with these words let's say hallelujah church Amen. At this time, we want to, amen, prepare to receive our musical uh, presentation by the Shalom Fellowship International Praise Team. Before they come, we want to acknowledge the shepherd of this great church. Let's put our hands together for Bishop Elect Winans. Amen. Bishop Murray, Apostle Newton, Overseer Bannister, Pastor Ballard, Pastor Ray. He's done such a wonderful job praying. Amen, Pastor Johnson. Amen, all of the clergy who are here. Amen, on today. So the protocol has been established. At this time, we're going to prepare to receive this, um, <clears throat> this musical selection uh, followed by a civic presentation from the city of Detroit. Let's come in that order.
And mother used to sing this one. She would say, I'm too close. our civic presentation from the city of Detroit. Let's come in there. Praise the Lord, everyone. I bring you greetings from the office of Council President Pro Tem Mary Sheffield. She couldn't be here today, but she wanted to express her sincere condolences to the family, to the church family, and to everyone present today. The Spirit of Detroit Award is presented herewith as an expression of the gratitude and esteem of the citizens of Detroit to the family of God's general, Dr. Gertrude Stacks, in recognition of exceptional achievement, outstanding leadership, and dedication to improving the quality of life by the City Council of Detroit, Michigan. May the spirit of Dr. Stacks continue to live through the lives that she touched and the impartations that she deposited in the people of God. From the office of Council President Pro Tem, Mary Sheffield. This certificate here is from City Clerk Janice Winfrey. Certificate of Appreciation. The gratitude and appreciation of the people of the City of Detroit are extended by the Detroit City Clerk to Pastor Dr. Gertrude Stacks, celebration of life, God's general. Whereas today we honor and celebrate the life of Pastor Dr. Gertrude Stacks, who made her transition on Monday, September 20th, 2021, and remains with us through her legacy and the many lives she enriched. And whereas Pastor Dr. Gertrude Stacks was born September 8th, 1944, and was the seventh child of 11 children born to the late prophet Cato the second, Tennessee Witherspoon in Detroit, Michigan. Dr. Stacks received her honorary doctorate of humanities degree in Hardy, Hardy Theological Academy in 1999 and her doctor of divinity degree from Hardy Theological Academy in 2004. And whereas pastor Dr. Gertrude Stacks was the beloved wife of the late Bishop Jesse T. Stacks. And during this union, Bishop Jesse T. Stacks appointed in charge Dr. Stacks with the leadership of Shalom Temple Ministries, now known as Shalom Fellowship International Ministries of Detroit, Michigan, Harrisburg, and Chicago. And whereas Pastor Dr. Gertrude Stacks established the spiritual clinic specializing in building one's physical, mental, and spiritual character. She is also known for providing food to the homeless and using her gift of wisdom on various platforms, including social media that provided spiritual counseling to many lives at the local, state, and global levels to develop pastors, leaders, and congregants in the faith-based world thereof. Therefore, be it resolved that I, 
on behalf of John Dismanfrey, Detroit City Clerk, hereby recognize the contributions and honor the legacy of Pastor Gertrude Stacks. May God continue to richly bless those who live, who lives were enriched by her ministry. There is a um, resolution coming from the state of Michigan, the governor's office. It is forthcoming to the family. May God continue to bless, strengthen, and comfort you during this time. Amen. Let's put our hands together. Truly, Dr. Stax's ministry has spread the length and breadth of this country, and we're so elated to today to be able to celebrate this great woman of God. Shalom Fellowship International is going to come, and we're going to have reflections on behalf of the church. We're asking everyone, if you would today, please uh, be mindful of the time. Stick to two minutes. Everybody say two minutes. Say it one more time for the Holy Ghost. Two minutes. Amen. We know Mother has left an indelible impression upon many of our lives, but we can't tell all the stories. So just choose one or whatever your tribute may be. And um, let's pay homage to this great woman of God. So at this time, elect lady Etta McCaskill is coming after her elder Harvey Wilson. After, uh, after, uh, after him will be Elder Dino Allen and followed by Elder Dennis Rudolph. Let's come in that order. You do not have to acknowledge the protocol that has already been established. Amen. I give honor to the Lord on today and I thank God for the life and the legacy of Dr. Gertrude Stacks. I thank God for who she was and what she was to me. I thank the Lord for meeting her when I was 18 years old and I've been with her, I'm now 63, and I'm thanking God. Didn't think I'd make it to 50, running from the hit man, God saved me. But he put me with some women. I've learned many things over this journey. I thank God for Bishop Wine. There's one thing that he told me, he said, if you can't take a rebuke, you'll never be saved. Mother Boyd then told me, she said, you gotta learn how to take a lick and give one. So she said, you got to learn to endure some things. So Bishop Stacks taught a message. He said, the gifts of God got to speak for you one day in eternity. You got to be able to say that patience had her perfect word. You got to be able to say long suffering. I suffered long in some things. I forbear in some things. So I learned to endure as a young saint. And so then before Dr. Boyd made her transition, she said, I want you to do something. And she told me, she said, I want you to hold that line of old time holiness. She said, I want you to birth like me. I want you to teach like me. And then she said, and then transmit spiritual gifts. And I thought at the time it was a huge thing. But on this journey I've learned, Dr. Stax then instilled in me, she said, you got to learn to hear with your inner ear and you got to learn to see with your inner eye. Don't look on the outward. Don't look at what they look like. Don't listen to what they say. But see in the spirit. See what the soul is longing for. You can't pray if you don't look at their spirit. You got to be able to see past flesh, see past what they're doing and saying, and be able because if you don't and so I asked the Lord what should I say he said she was grace under fire you got to be able when they don't like you still smile and still go with Jesus you got to be able when they talk about you don't change your countenance don't change your stance be able to pray under fire so I thank the Lord today I've learned grace I've learned fruit I've learned to endure and I've learned to stand thank God for Dr. Gertrude's Come on, give God praise. Come on, give him praise. We're giving honor to God and the elect uh, bishop and the the uh, perfecting family, we thank God for the precious Dr. Stacks and to all the clergy on today, uh, Mother Dupree, and to all, all the Shalom family and to the Stacks family, we thank God for you all. I want to thank God for what Dr. Stacks did for my family. She put uh, gifts into my wife, and uh, 
she made her what she is today in, in, in God. And uh, she prayed for my, my son. And my son had uh, leukemia, an incurable disease. Uh, he was supposed to die uh, in three months. And Dr. Stack stopped the leukemia uh, in his tracks. Come on, let's give God praise. She prayed for my oldest daughter, and my daughter became a producer for this company in Washington, D.C., and she works with them now, and uh, it's a prominent company, and so and she has brighter things coming in her life. Come on, let's thank God for that. Come on, let's give him praise. And before she deceased, she prayed and counseled my younger daughter and gave her some things to do. And uh, I believe she's going to do those things. And uh, uh, I, in 2019 and other times, she had me to travel and take her to the uh, airport and pick her up from the airport. And we had many, many good times. And she said, Elder Allen, you are my friend. And uh, that was a, a great compliment coming from her. And so uh, we became friends and good friends. And sometimes she would come to our house before she passed, and she would just sit and have a relaxing time. So let's thank God for the uh, precious life of Dr. Stax. Come on, let's give him praise. She blessed all of us and many of us in this room. Come on, let's give him praise. Come on, let's give God praise. God bless you. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name. We just um, honored to be here. I'm honored to um, be under this ministry. I thank God for Dr. Stax, and truly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss her dearly. And uh, she's been a blessing to my family. And she's been a blessing to me. And I just, I thank God because, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I thank God because you give us the word straightforward, in truth. She don't sugarcoat nothing because she want to make sure that we have a, a good understanding and be able to make it. Now, she's gone on, but we yet here. And the word that she has given us through the Lord and through the Holy Ghost is going to sustain us. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, because we yet, we have hope. She didn't teach us to herself, but she taught us to God. And I appreciate that. Oh, bless your name. I'm truly going to miss her. I'm just going to miss, you know, we were blessed to have a gift like that in our midst. A gift that could go to God for us. Lord, I thank you. And I, th I think we took that for granted. Because all we had to do was just call her. And she was able to give us an answer and unravel that problem, that situation, and give us a word. Lord, I thank you. And I thank God for this ministry. I believe David said, I once was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I thank God for the word of God and being taught the word of God. Oh, bless your name. Be encouraged. Amen. Hey, come on, let's praise him one more time. I want us at this time to thank God for Shalom Fellowship International. Let us stand to our feet. Come on, we're clapping our hands. 
for her administration, Sister Allen, Sister Rudolph, come on somebody, all of the elders, elect lady, and the reason why this is appropriate is because oftentimes mother was away ministering to us all over the country and they didn't have her all the time and they would get on flights and planes and cars and drive hours to come be in service with us and so we owe them our respect come on now and i would thank you for lending dr stacks to the world even if you don't like it we ought to say amen anyway hallelujah glory to god at this time we're going to prepare for acknowledgments and of condolences my sister hannah mccoy we're coming in this time praise god i would like to quickly just say that i want to thank god for mother mother stax's um, impartations into my life taking me under her wings at eight years old um, and I'm still here, and I thank God for God allowing me to be a part of her life, be a part of her family's life. Thank you all for sharing her with me all these years. Um, thank you. Amen. Cards and condolences for Dr. Gertrude Stacks. Dr. Gertrude Stacks has significantly touched our local community, our state, the United States of America, and the world. Through her incredible and anointed ministry, she has made an indelible and undeniable impact. Because of her life, her family has received an overwhelming abundance of expressions, of condolences, many cards, a multiplicity of letters, and numerous resolutions. Civic resolutions were received from Wayne County Sheriff Ray Washington, Alicia Bell, Wayne County Commission, and State Representative Tanisha Yancey of the First District. Time will not allow for all the expressions of love to be read during today's homegoing service, but for sake, of time, for sake of time, so I will read brief excerpts. Cards and letters of condolence were received from Dr. Gregory Tukes and True Church Ministries, Bishop Anthony Claxton and Lifeline Christian Center, Bishop Ellis Kelly Jr. and the Great Nation Prayer Ministries, Pastor Terrell Cobb, Pastor James Hall and Zion Congregational Church of God in Christ, Pastor Larry Trice and Tabernacle of David, Apostle Linnell Caldwell and First Baptist World Changers International Ministries and Bishop Marvin L. Winans and the Perfecting Church family. Pastor Alan Dixon and members of Mason Temple Church of God in Christ mourn with you in this hour of sorrow in your lives. Remember, God is, just, is too just to error and too wise to make a mistake. Pastor Kimberly Ray Gavin affectionately submits Mother Gertrude Stacks walked in genuine power and authority. Dr. Stacks has exchanged her elegant hats for her heavenly crown of righteousness. Bishop Glenn Staples send, sends comforting words. Your loss in hev is heaven's gain. Mother Gertrude Stacks has gone to a mansion prepared for her by an all-loving God. To the church, to the family and church family of Dr. Gertrude Stacks, a spiritual giant and mother in Zion, has transitioned to receive her rewards for over 50 years of unwavering faithfulness in God's kingdom. Dr. Stacks has been a gift to the kingdom of God and has continued the legacy of the great women who live to pray for our needs. In loving service, Mother Barbara McCoo Lewis, General Supervisor of the International Department of Women for the Church of God in Christ. In my last few minutes, I will briefly expound on resolutions from Apostle Nija Newton, Reverend Curtis Eugene Daniel, Bishop Orlando Williams, Prophet Alex Scott, Chief Apostle Dr. Preston Roll, and Apostle Garfield Curlin Jr. Whereas, Dr. Gertrude Stacks was a 21st century leader, general of the faith, 
pastor, wife of the late Bishop Jesse T. Stacks. Whereas Dr. Gertrude Stacks, a servant of our Lord and Savior, served the body of Christ for over 52 years. Whereas Dr. Stacks, a woman of integrity and strength, has left an indelible legacy through her teaching and anointing. Whereas, through hours of prayer and travail, thousands have been set free and delivered through her labor of love in prayer and deliverance, and many sons and daughters have been birthed through God's anointed Dr. Gertrude Stacks. Be it resolved that we will ever cherish her memory and emulate her admirable traits and look forward with joy to meeting her in glory. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Thank you. The family of Dr. Gertrude Stacks sincerely appreciates all cards, letters, resolutions, phone calls, and acts of kindness shown to them during this time. The family will extend their appreciation at a later date. Amen. We thank God for that, for those acknowledgement of condolences. At this time, we're going to prepare for family reflections. Uh, we're going to have Pastor Tamara Bennett. She's going to come. Following her will be Dr. Dorothy Board Rush. Following her will be Dr. Rita Newell, and then Pastor Jesse Stacks Jr. Again, we ask that everyone please uh, keep your uh, reflections to two minutes, and they will come in that order. Let the church say amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, we got to give Jesus a praise. We got to clap this. We need a, we need a little praise. Yeah. So, give an honor to God and to all the saints and all the friends and to my brother, Bishop Winans, to all of the pastors and clergy. Garfield, I love you forever. Um, to all the saints and friends, to all my entire Stacks family. I love you. Um, to the Weatherspoon family, I love you. To the entire Shalom Fellowship International family, my prayers are with you. As you know, we sat in your seat 20 years ago, so we understand and we feel you. So um, I'm going to try to do this, but did y'all see the Emmys with Debbie Allen? Okay, so the Emmys with Debbie Allen, she was getting this honorary award. I'm going to obey. She was getting this honorary award. But she was, and then they started playing the music. She said, uh-uh. Not today. I'm not going to do that, but um, so I have been a pastor's child my entire life. Um, and uh, I honor Mother Stacks because um, she snatched me up when I got saved, first got saved. And I was in my teens, and I had come from a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff that the church shouldn't have known didn't know, um, but I was able to share it with her. And she was able to unravel and walk me out of many, many things. Well, from that, what she taught me was how to die in the spotlight. Because my life had always been in the open to the church. So, you know, when my mom and dad got a divorce, that was all open in the church. When the family had to be mended, that was all open in the church. When my husband died, that was all open in the church. Everything that we've ever done has always been dying in the spotlight. Can't run from it. Everybody see it. But you know, as I got older, then of course when I started pastoring, and I'm praying for the people that are going through the exact same thing. I started thinking about it. I was like, hey, wait a minute. They have issues too. We don't know how many times preachers are beating their wives and then coming to preach. You know why we don't know? It ain't our business. 
I had to think about it. We don't know how many intercessors that are speaking in tongues with us are cussing their kids out at home. We don't know because it ain't our business. We don't know how many preachers when they leave here go to their room and drink like I don't know what. We don't know because it ain't our business. So for the first time, what I feel really, 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 really good about is that the relationship and the Stacks and Weatherspoon family and for sure my relationship with Mother Stacks ain't none of your business. None of your business. None of it. This root is deep and it's deeper is deeper than you could ever imagine. It didn't start here. It started with I.W. Winans and my daddy getting saved at I.W. Winans. It started with Elder Weatherspoon being my daddy's tutor and mentor and training him in the ways of God. This thing is deep. It started with Papa Boyd. Yeah, coming to Mac Avenue and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. The mother boy had to sit on her hands because women weren't allowed to be used. And then I.W. Winans had to confirm God is in that woman. This thing is deep that you could never understand. The roots are deep. I loved that woman. Understand. So, anywho, let me move on. Now, what the Lord did say to us, if I could just read this real quick and then I'm going to be done. What the Lord did say to us in the book of Acts 1 and 9, the Bible says, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, Two men stood by them in white apparel, which said unto them, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up in heaven? Why are you gazing? I promised that I was going to do some things. This death had to happen, but I promised you a comforter. He said, why are you gazing? What you need to do is do what I told you to do and go and begin to pray. I want to encourage not only the Shalom Temple family, not only those that Mother Stacks was so dear to, but this thing is happening worldwide. Stuff is happening. Founders, great men and women of God are leaving all over this world. We we are all feeling that impact. We're all feeling the, um, this world is like, I keep telling everybody, the world is crazy. It's losing its mind. But God made a promise to us. And I hear the Holy Ghost saying, why are we gazing? Like, what are we going to do next? And what's going to happen next? And what's going to happen to the church? Or what's going to happen to me? Jesus made a promise. He said, I need you to just go tarry and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Bible said that they prayed continually. I think it was 120 people that went up in a room and began to pray. If we're going to make a change, if we're going to be able to move forward in the spirit we're supposed to move in, we got to move it in prayer. Prayer. So the Bible said that they continued in prayer. And then suddenly, we stand here today, this is here today, because of the great men and women of God that I spoke about, they prayed. And we are reaping the benefits. The Winans family is who they are, because prayer was put on their lives. The Sachs family, we're gonna be all right, because prayer was put on our lives. The Weatherspoon family, we're gonna be okay. Because prayer was put on our lives. Shalom Temple, you're going to be all right. Because prayer was put on us. Prayer has been put over us. And then we will wait for the suddenly. God bless you.
Let's give God a hand clap of praise. I called my cousin on the 8th, which was her birthday, correct? I'm going to be sure. And I t reminded her on, on Pastor Bishop Wininson. <laughs> you know, I started to, right? <laughs> on January the 19th, 2018, the Lord took me home. I passed. And I had gotten in touch with Gert when I came back. I told a pastor, I said, I told the Lord I haven't finished the work. And he said, up on requests. Because Dorothy Board Rush was complaining about being tired. Traveling and being tired. And the Lord thought I was ready to come. I lied to you not. And I said, what do you think about that? She said, now, I'm telling you this. When he called me, I'm going. <laughs> Hold us, see. I said, uh, uh, girl. She said, Dorothy, I'm telling you now, when he calls me, I'm going. Ten days later, my cousin left here. Anybody know me? No, I don't do these good. I lost it. And the Spirit of the Lord let me know. She shared it with me. Y'all ain't clapping for me. So right quickly, I'm going introduce to introduce me to some. <laughs> I am Mother Boy's daughter. How I see? Glory to God. Don't get me started up in here. Hi! So when my mother went to be with the Lord, I lost my spiritual mother and my biological mother. But I stayed saved. He delivered me. He set me free. She taught me that you can't talk about this, Mother Dupree. You got to live it. I'm living holy. I hope that was two minutes. Praise him. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Oh! This white mic. What's wrong with that? That white mic sound better than this one, and it's always ready. Over that dog. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's it. Over that dog. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Over that dog. My soul love him. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Bless him. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. In June of 1996, Dr. Stax came to the city of Chicago. She taught a message on holiness. It changed the very course of my spiritual walk. I began to come to every fourth weekend service with Mother Boyd and Dr. Stax. And every fourth weekend, Dr. Stax would teach the word. I would eat the word. 
and Mother Boy would shoot the word that I had taken in. Every fourth weekend, Dr. Stacks would come to me after the service, bring me down from the spirit, explain to me everything that had transpired. I got the tapes that she had spoken, and I ate on them for six months. January 1st, 1997, I had my first encounter with Jesus Christ. And after that, she began to start pulling me towards her and pulling me towards her and pulling me towards her. And I remember the first time when she stayed at my home. It was a very, very nervous situation for me, but also a good situation. Because she began to speak to me about the spirit realm and what God had called me to do and how to get clean and live holy and pure before the Lord Jesus Christ. And so for the last 22 years, my home became a place of refuge for her. And the Lord told me from the first day, he said, every time she come, you give her the best house in your room. So I had two homes built. And I put her in the best house in the room. Dr. Stacks would come and stay for months at a time every single year. But I watched her life and the Lord showed me, this is how you treat a, me a vessel like this. You don't handle her any kind of way. So I was in training. The Lord taught me many things about her. She would come sometimes and be in prayer and stay in the room for three days. He would tell me when to knock, when not to knock. And I told her, well, when you need me, you just call me on the phone. And at that time, she began to study with me, teach me the, the importance of how to study the word of God. She taught me about prayer and how it was vital for a saint's life. It had to be developed, and the further up in God you went, the more the prayer went down in the belly. She taught me about purging and, and all those things that pertain to holiness and godliness. And I can say that even our last conversation, I knew that mother was leaving because of the things that she spoke. I thank God for entrusting me with a gift like Dr. Gertrude Stacks. And while I miss on earth, I know one day I'll see her again. God bless you. Praise the, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today is truly a gathering, a home going. And uh, as I was looking around, this is truly a service of the roots and the fruit coming together. Uh, Mother Stax was a hard worker in the gospel. And so part of her journey through the roots we watched Mother Stax go through. We were there when Mother Stax had to suffer some of the greatest persecutions. But we watched God charge her. We watched the anointing graduate her. And we watched Mother Stax stay faithful. If I had to put a name by Mother Stax, it would be faithful to the end. I remember when uh, Mother Boyd had us and she was trying to train us on the field. And she had us to go out with her a few times, and we rode, did the revival, and came back at around 11.30 that night. And I got home, and I said, that was a mighty revival. It was a great trip. And I said, now I can kind of relax. And I got a call at around 12.30. Got in 11.30. I got a call at 12.30. Mother said, be ready at 5 o'clock. We better pick you up. And I said, if, if Mother Stax is going through this, not one or two years, 20 and 30 years of constantly go. But you know what? She loved it because it was part of her course. And it was part of the root building time in her life. And I find out now as I saw her on the course of her fruitfulness, if you don't have no roots, you're not going to have no fruit. It's all over YouTube now looking at the course of her fruit. But one thing about the root is the unseen part of your life. And we've watched the suffering and the labor and, and those roots were there. If the roots are aligned right, you're going to get fruit. So we thank God today for the root section being here. And we thank God for the fruit and how God have used her to plant and impart in future pastors and future bishops, prophets, and just to impart into their life. And we just thank God for the fruitfulness of our life. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your vessel. Hallelujah. 
We praise you. Amen. Come on, let's continue with that hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. This time we're going to prepare for the closing of the beer at this time.
Let's celebrate our life. Let's clap our hands and celebrate the life of Dr. Griffin. There is a plan of the Lord. To deliver you we trust the plan of God there is a plan of my Lord to redeem you yeah 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 every hour hey church every day At this time, we're going to have a poem, a daughter of Zion, Margot Paul, following by the reading of the obituary by daughter of Zion, Diane Rudolph. Let's come in that order. God bless you. Come on, let's give the Holy Ghost a hand. Come on and give him a hand. Thank you, Jesus. Our mother, God's general, the virtuous woman. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. She is radiant like the stars of the night for all to behold her beauty. A woman of wisdom, honor, and strength. A woman who's ever so kind. A precious jewel of this sort is extremely hard to find. She sits among the honorable women. In the sight of God and man, Coupled with fear, adorned with grace, she's glorious all within. Who can find a virtuous woman, a woman who God adores? She's set aside and consecrated for the service of the Lord. She gives her life for the sake of the ministry, for God's people, and for the lost. O oh, tower, O oh, mother in the midst of Zion, you were a stronghold among the flock. Walking in the gifts of the Spirit and in Jesus Christ's authority, pastors, clergies, and countless saints have pitched their tents about thee. Carrying the spirit of revival, the cloud followed her wherever she went to add increase to the body of Christ to restore, deliver, and transmit. Dr. Gertrude Stacks was an extraordinary example of what salvation is about. And said, a morning in this place today, there shall be a great victory shout. For she has crossed over into eternity, and the heavens are rejoicing now to receive another general who has made God so ever proud. She resides among the great cloud of witnesses, and heaven is now her home. Hallelujah. She made preparations, purified herself to stand before the Godhead's throne, taken away. But what she left behind was an inheritance for you and me. It was transmitted to us through the Spirit and put down inside our bellies. Come on and praise him. Yes, she finished her course. She has kept the faith to see him face to face. And all her work shall proceed her swiftly to praise her in the gates. So let's finish the work God has given us to do for the hour is at hand is late. 
looking unto Jesus and trusting him as author and finisher of our faith. Come on and praise him, saints. Come on and give him glory. Come on and lift him up right now. Thank you, Jesus. Dr. Gertrude Staggs, Sunrise, September the 8th, 1944, Sunset, September the 20th, 2021, The Journey Home. The Obituary, My Early Life. Dr. Gertrude Staggs was born September the 8th, 1944, to the late Prophet Cato the second, and Tennessee Weatherspoon, and she was the seventh child of 11 children. At the age of six, Dr. Stack's mother suffered a life-threatening asthma attack. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Dr. Stack's, and she laid hands on her mother, and she was miraculously healed. As a child, she was in the yard making mud pies. When a cat that had been poisoned was walking along a fence, creeping up on her, and her dog saw it. The dog jumped over the fence. The dog jumped over her and the fence and grabbed the cat by the throat and killed it. God used her dog to protect her. A native of Detroit, Michigan, she was educated in Detroit public schools where she was second lieutenant in the ROCT at Northwestern High School, which teaches students citizenship, leadership, character, and community service. She was also a member of the high school choir. Dr. Stax was a tomboy and enjoyed hanging out with the boys, playing softball and other sports. She enjoyed skating, was a lifeguard, and enjoyed swimming whenever her schedule permitted. Transformation. At the age of 25, Dr. Sachs accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as her personal savior. At the age of 26, she began singing with Mother Estella Boyd and Mother Russell and tearing on the mic in the services. Two weeks after Dr. Sachs' transformation, God performed his first miracle in her life. She went to the doctor and her blood level was 4.5. The doctor asked her to leave the office because he didn't want her to die there. Her dad took her to the revival that night, and God infused her with blood by taking her blood level from 4.5 to 17. Hallelujah. God sent an electro charge through her body. And she jumped straight up off the floor and began praising God. God put victory in her feet. At the, at the Daughter of Zion meeting in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania in 1986, Dr. Stax went to the bathroom, fell out on the floor, and died. She lost all her bodily fluids and began turning blue. Two sisters ran and got Mother Boyd. Mother Boyd began calling her name and Dr. Stack's spirit flew back into her body. When she opened her eyes, Mother Boy said, open your mouth. When Dr. Hey, hey. When Dr. Stax opened her mouth, Mother Boy blew in her mouth and gave her life. That's what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Training in the spirit. Dr. Mother Estella Boyd. International Mother in Zion was Dr. Stack's spiritual mother. She trained her in ministry. She received great impartations from God's anointed vessel. Her humble beginnings as a nurse and forerunner to Dr. Mother Estella Boyd developed her into a prolific teacher, evangelist, pastor, seer, doctor in the spirit, general and transmitter to the body of Christ. Dr. Stack's gifts were used to help God's people and his leaders. These gifts include word of wisdom, word of knowledge, healing, 
prophecy, discerning of spirits, all for the perfecting of the saints and the work of the ministry. Ephesians 4 and 12. Ministry. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Jeremiah 3.15. Dr. Gertrude Stax was the beloved wife of the late Bishop Jesse T. Stax. They served faithfully in ministry for many years until God called Bishop Stax home to rest on October 3rd, 2001. Before his departure, he charged Dr. Stax with the leadership of Shalom Temple Ministries. The name was changed to, the name was changed later to Shalom Fellowship International. This is Shalom Pentecost of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Dr. Stack's ministry was a far-reaching and sought-after one. Inquiries for her service grew globally as her ministry gained prominence through YouTube, Facebook, and other social media outlets where countries' lives were blessed, where countless lives were blessed, healed, restored, saved, and encouraged. Known across the nations throughout several parts of the world, she traveled internationally to places like India, Dubai, Egypt, Abadubi, and Turks and Caicos. Doctor in the Spirit. Dr. Stax was a doctor in the spirit. This God-given gift had x-ray vision and was above the level of an MD. Dr. Steer Stax would go into the hospitals on several occasions for different individuals and read x-rays, explain diagnoses, speak to the doctors using medical terms, and explain the outcome. Dr. Stax had many facets to her ministry, including but not limited to Youth Academy, Substance and Character, and God's Spiritual Clinic, an entity comprised of many components, all encompassing one common goal, deliverance of the total man, mind, body, soul, and spirit. God would, would allow Dr. Stax to go down the corridors of your life, going into the past to answer the whys of your life so that you would be able to grow in your spiritual walk with him. Dr. Stax received her honorary doctorate of humanities degree from the A.L. Hardy Theological Academy in, in 1999 and her doctorate of divinity degree from the A.L. Hardy Theological Academy in 2004. It is finished. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Second Timothy 4 and 7. Monday, September the 20th, 2021. While peacefully sleeping, God deemed it well to call his general, Dr. Gertrude Stacks, home to rest eternally in his care. The departure of the late Dr. Gertrude Stax will leave a huge void in the kingdom of God for many years to come. She leaves to celebrate her life and powerful legacy, four stepchildren, Prophet Jesse Dolis Stax Jr., Sybil, Daniel Winans, Pastor Tamara Quinton Bennett, the late Elder Keith Carol Stacks, three brothers, Apostle Raymond, Judy Weatherspoon, Ronald Loretta Weatherspoon, and Louis Thelma Weatherspoon, one sister, Mother Mary Weatherspoon, one stepsister, Gail Summers, Two sister-in-laws, Doris Weatherspoon and Angela Weatherspoon, and a host of grandchildren, nephews, nieces, cousins, and relatives. She also leaves 
behind three goddaughters, elect lady Ada McCaskill, Dr. Rita Newell, and Hannah McCoy, her beloved church, Shalom Fellowship International of Detroit, Michigan. This is Shalom Pentecost Church of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and a host of spiritual children and fellowship saints. Amen. If you have been blessed by Dr. Stax's life or ministry, let's stand and give the Lord a praise. Every, come on. We thank God for this family who loaned her to us for all of these years. Come on, let's thank God. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and tell them God is still here. Say he's great and he's greatly to be praised. You know, I was thinking uh, about a few months ago, uh, where maybe a, past, a little over a year ago, uh, Dr. Stacks uh, came to the city and I had received a call from Pastor Bannister. I think they were in conference at the church. And um, he called me, he said, mother's on her way to your town, pick her up and take her to the hospital. I said, to the hospital? Okay, and so she called and said, yeah, this pastor was in her spirit and the devil was going to take his life. And so she flew, interrupted her conference, left the conference, flew all the way to North Carolina, and I picked her up. It was late that night, and I picked her up, and she was dressed in her white doctor's uh, jacket with Dr. Stacks written on it. And we walked into the hospital and it was so late, uh, they, the visiting hours were over and the lady said, who are you? She said, Dr. Stacks, because, because she had doctor in front of her name, we were cleared to go on in. And so <laughs> we went on into the hospital and there laid the pastor there. He had pneumonia and the pneumonia was so bad he couldn't breathe, couldn't talk, couldn't do anything. And uh, she looked at me, she said, close the door. And when she closed the door, she began to pray and she stopped in her prayer. She said, the Holy Ghost says, shoot him to the place of breath. <laughs> hey, and she took him by his hand and began to shoot him in the spirit. And the man stayed out so long until his vital started just going crazy on, the, on, on, the, on his readings, on his charts. And the nurse came and said, is everything all right? Mother just smiled and said, yeah, he's fine. And he was just moving in the spirit. And then finally he quickened right back into his body. He took the mask off and started breathing. Oh, Sunda. Hallelujah. She said, get your phone out and get this on video. Hallelujah. She said, because I want them to see there's a place in the spirit called breath. Oh, and I believe if we go up in God today. And ask him to move us hey, to a higher place. And that's one of the miracles. Hey, I saw her perform that miracle. When he came back to himself, he began to breathe. She hit him on the back and he began to cough up that pneumonia. And I want you to know the next day, I believe it was, he was checked out and going home. Am I right about it? And so many of us have testimonies about the miracle working power of God. Truly, she was more than a mother, more than a pastor. Amen. She had the works of an apostle. Amen. On her life. And if you have been blessed, healed, delivered, received a shot in the spirit, I want you to open up your mouth and praise him for what he's done. Ho! Oh! Come on, praise him. Jesus. Woo. Handanarabo ho sataba. Ho. Ho be a sandaba. Woo. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. God's got everything you need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I wanted to say that. Hey, God. Because we're celebrating the life and ministry of a life of power. 
And I said, Lord, what are we going to do? Many of our examples are going on to be with the Lord. And amen. I can hear it say, I put it in you. I remember her putting my, her hand in my belly. And she said, she said, now, there are many voices around the altar. She said, there are voices in the heavens. She said, she said, a, she said uh, 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 Pastor Curlin had that voice. She said, and I'm going to put it in you. My God. And we begin to pray and tear. And I saw the Holy Ghost do some major things over these past few years through her ministry. So I'm saying to you today, what she's put in you, do that. Amen, somebody. And I was thinking, I said, Lord, and I'm moving on. I said, Lord, hallelujah. How are we, how we going to carry? No one person has the mantle. Don't get that. Don't even reduce her mantle to one person. Glory to God. But many sons and daughters. The scripture says a portion without measure will he give you. Hallelujah. And so I said, Lord, what do we do? He said, first of all, we're going to have to get consecrated enough to even carry what's in us amen church whatever your part is we can't be messy and carry that part of amen that mantle but we got to carry it like she carried it hallelujah through selling out and the one thing I'm, I'm reminded of this woman of God more than her miracles she was obedient to God anything God asked her to do I believe she did it amen without grumbling and complaining hallelujah and so we thank god and we honor the lord for her life one more time i wanted to insert that after we read the obituary because many of us today are here because of what she has imparted into our lives amen and we thank him come on clap your hands one more time for jesus at this time we're going to have a musical presentation by the perfecting church after that we're going to have remarks and clergy acknowledgement by pastor gary ballard let's come in that order yes it's all heaven heaven is mine it's all heaven heaven is mine there's a special place where the
on, let's clap our hands and bless him. Come on, clap your hands and bless him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My quick uh, couple minutes before we bring the preachers up. There was a certain time that Dr. Stax was at the house and um, this is one of her extended stays. And we would get up in the morning and Dr. Stax would be upstairs. She, we'd just find her somewhere when we get up different times of the night or the morning. And she was at the TV just beating up the remote. <laughs> and uh, I said, Dr. Stax, can I, uh, I said, what, what you trying to do? She said, I'm trying to get this thing. I got it, I got it. Y'all know, know how she talks. She wouldn't let you help her. Oh, I got it. I'm, I'm going to whoop this thing. I'm going to whoop it. And uh, she got the TV on, and every time she turned the TV on during that time, uh, uh, my son's DVD kept coming on. And she's like, what does this little boy keep coming on? I said, that's, I said, that's his karate kid. She said, who's that? I said, that little boy is uh, Jaden Smith. That's Will Smith's son. I know who he is. I know. I know Will Smith. My, bro my, brother, my brother in Hollywood. You know, we know all them people. We from Detroit. And, and you know I know that. I said, I know my, she, you know. And she said, uh, and, and she stopped. She said, look at him, going like his daddy. And she said, what you do is you cover up one eye. And you look into the other eye. And she said, I'm going to tell you how. She said, the eye is a window to the soul. And I'm going to tell you how. I'm going to show you how to read spirits. She says, now see, she said, he's tenderhearted like his daddy. And she said, he got that part from his dad. She began to share some things. She said, give me, give me over to the word. So we got to the Word Network, and I was like, uh-oh. This is a time within the last uh, maybe 10 years ago, you begin to see the rise of young mini mega churches, And the different preachers would come on. And she said, you see that? You see him? You see that? She said, now this one here, he, he built his ministry on giving to the poor. She said, you see all that outreach? She said, now fishes and loaves is what fill your church up. She said, gifts and fishes and loaves. Next one came on. She said, see there? On one Sunday, he was giving away refrigerators. Anybody who needed a refrigerator, they were showing the clips. If you needed a car, they were giving away cars. She said, see, this leader been so good to the people that he loved them so hard. She said, I don't care what he does. They never go nowhere, and they go defend their leader because they got all things in common. The next one came on. Look at this spirit here. He got bowling alleys, soccer fields. She said, well, that's what we're supposed to have. We need we need some stuff, too. That's Academy. That, he doing my stuff. And she was explaining it. Skating rinks. And she said, see, he's, he's being a father to the young men. These young men don't have no fathers. And she said, see, that, that, that's what we need. And I, looked, and, I, and, and I was kind of breaking up a little bit. I was like, Dr. Stacks. I said, we could have been did that. And she looked at me kind of like, y'all want to go, y'all ain't, ain't got that. I said, Dr. Stacks, we in there preaching the skin off our, uh, praying the skin off our knees and shutting in and ain't no time, ain't no strength for no outreach and all that. <laughs> we in there trying to get the sound and hollering. You said when we've got meat, eagles will come. I said, y'all didn't told, you ain't told us nothing about no fishes and loaves. She said, then you ain't going to have no church. You ain't got no works. That's what fill your church up, that and the gifts. I said, Dr. Stacks. And I thought about me and others in the fellowship in my generation. And I was like, we could have been did this. They ain't got nothing. She began to tell me and talk to me about us finding what it is uniquely that God gave us. She said, see, here what he gave you unraveling. He gave you revelation. He gave you teaching. He, she talked to me about different ones of us. And she said, now you got to put that over somehow and get it to your generation. She said, you can't do like we did in our generation. It ain't going to work in your day. She said, y'all going to have to have. And I've watched her down through the years shoot people and talk to people, prophesy about school. Dr. Stacks cared about our natural lives. She cared about our children. When she'd see you, she'd ask you, why are you so dark? Last time I saw you, you were shining. Come here. she get to rubbing you. Are you tired? You get into something, what you do? <laughs> oh, yeah, she, she tell you, I'm going to check her. Come here, I'm going to check you. She cared about your joy. She watched our marriages. Come on, somebody. I, wasn't mad. I ain't mad about nobody getting my ankles. We come this way. 
Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Mother Boyd used to say, and sit us on the floor at her feet in Shalom after service. And she said, the gifts ain't nothing. God got the gifts. Said, what he need is a vessel. She said, gifts don't impress nobody. Out. She said, gifts, you can go to hell with your gift. She said, but what he's looking for is a vessel. So, no, we weren't allowed to speak. We couldn't even speak funny to our wives. Y'all got quiet on that. Elder Collins better saw us getting the door for our wives. Oh, all right, later day. But I tell you this, you're not going to hold this charge unless you come under the law of what it is you've been imparted into. Whatever your course, whatever your grade, there's a law with it. And the law is when we leave here. The law is at home. The law of the order of our gift. And we have to order our days and our life. Say amen. amen. What it is, shalom, what it is, sons and daughters all over that. Dr. Stacks labored with you intensively outside of the pulpit. Your degrees and your life and the things that she told you about your relationships, your children. That's our work. We know what to do when we leave here. We got plenty of work to do. And we know how to do it. Say amen. amen. We got the formula to straight street, right? And that's where we're going. That's my cue. The preachers are coming. Tell somebody the preachers are coming. Next thing they told me to do were all the evangelists that God have blessed through Dr. Stacks. Will you quickly stand? All the evangelists. Wherever you are, every evangelist that she has helped stand, every minister that have been blessed in your ministry, she has helped you in your ministry. You're a minister. We're talking about ministry gifts, evangelist ministries. Where are the pastors at that God used Dr. Stacks to help, helped you in your church, helped you in your ministry, talked to you in the pulpit? Where are the pastors? Where are the bishops? Where are the bishops? Will you stand? The apostles. Where are the apostles? Where are the overseers? Is that everybody? Pastor, teacher, apostle, bishop. Come on, y'all. Let's give a hand to all of these. All of these. Hold your charge. We acknowledge Mother May Dupree. We thank God for Dr. Stax day one. Here are the preachers coming in this order. First we'll have Bishop David Billy. After Bishop David Billy, we will have Bishop Alvernus Johnson. After Bishop Alvernus Johnson, Mother May Dupree will come. After Mother May Dupree, Apostle Christopher Mike will come. After Apostle Christopher Mike, Apostle, Apostle Garfield Curlin will wrap it up for us. Say amen. Here they come in that order. Put your hands together for the Lord. God bless you. We want to honor the Lord for this glorious day and this time of celebration. The Bible says, for we know that if this earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have another building, not made with human hands, and it's eternal in the heaven. Bless God for it, Pastor Winings, to all of the clergy, to all of this family. We want you to know we thank God for you. We appreciate the life of Mother Stacks. Amen. A wonderful, amazing, anointed vessel that only eternity will reveal all of the lives that she has touched. And so we are so thankful for her life. And my words are short. Clap your hands one more time and let's celebrate her life. She has touched many of us. The Bible said, blessed are they that die in the Lord that they may cease from their labor and their works will follow them. Mother Stacks, rest well. We'll see you in the morning. First giving honor to God, who is the head of my life, to the pastor and to all the whom honor is due, to the Shalom family, the Stacks family, the Weatherspoons family. 
I walked in this building last night and I had no idea, Mother Mary, what you must have felt like because I never lost a sibling. By the time I went to the restaurant and got on the highway, I had a phone call that changed my life forever. I had lost a sibling. I got home and I was barely able to breathe. It was like my Ronald to Pastor Marvin. But I thought about the love, and that's what stands out with me in the fellowship. Because I was loved. Never abused, never mistreated, always loved. And so love got me up this morning, helped me get dressed. Love helped me drive down the highway and get here to salute this woman of God. I felt so honored to have been chosen to say anything. She had so many sons. We sing the song as children. Father Abraham has many sons. Well, no, Mother Stacks has many sons. Like middle, older, and younger ones. And the older ones always look at the young ones like, like something. And the older ones look at the little ones like something. And the ones in the middle just looking like this. I'm in the middle. I'm just trying to see what y'all going to do. So many people are dying. Every day we're hearing about it. If I were a singer, I would sing a song, but I'm not a singer by no stretch of the imagination, so I'll do Kirk Franklin for you. I'll say the words. <laughs> Tell the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing of his mercy and his grace. A mansion far and blessed. He'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing there will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Just give me a second. Just lift your hands and tell the Lord thank you. I, I so much went through my mind about Dr. Stacks, my sister in the Lord. She's truly been a friend. I met her in the year of 1972. And I've seen down through the years in the course of time, her course, how she changed course, and how I've seen her grow in the Lord. And she has been an asset in my life. And I was at home. When I heard about it, it hit me like a ton of bricks because as long as I know she was all right, I was all right. But one thing I know, she finished her course. And the Inamanasia. Hey, glory to God. And the charge, the charge that she had, she finished her charge. Hadiyasha. A charge is being entrusted with a task a duty or responsibility and she held up great in that standing of her charge and I often I'm not see her. hey glory after she died I began to talk to the Lord about some things you know about why but then on Saturday morning I talked a little more to the Lord, and that evening, she visited me. Shamasia, her presence was strong, and the anointing came upon me. I got a shot in the spirit. Oh! Oh! Osana. Some people don't believe it, but I'm a witness of it. The anointing was so strong upon me. I said, and, and, and Sunday, it just messed me up. But I'm, t I 
The charge is every charge, every hanky, every towel. You must believe that what you have received, it is prepping you and getting you ready to fulfill your purpose. There's a job to be done. And she finished, of course, now we got to finish ours. She took the charge and she, watch this, poured into others and prepared you. It's not over yet. Take the charge and run with it. Come on, somebody. I'm about to take my seat, but I feel joy on the inside. I can see her rejoicing. Hey, glory. Because she did her part. We got to do ours. She visited me that day. It was so strong. Bishop Wines, I'm sorry. I, I acknowledge you. Hey, hallelujah. I smelled the fragrance of the anointing. And now all of a sudden, you know, the shots that you get from Mother Boyd and how you feel just all messed up. I got all messed up. She came to visit me to let me know everything was all right. And I'm my Masha. Yes, God, I tell Sister Dorothy I'm the baby. Because I was the last one with Mother Boy. And my sister, she helped me in many areas, even when my mother uh, had an aneurysm. She gave us instruction, different things she had parted and did in our lives. I appreciate it. But I want to tell you today, take your charge and run with it. Pour into others like they poured into us. Prepare them for the coming of the Lord. Yes, he man the Osha. Oh, banana na masia. Come on, it did it the Osha. Come on, it did it the Osha. Yes. Oh, yes. There is a place. There is a place I must go. There's a place you must go. Come on, it did the Osha. We weren't given the charges from nothing. She finished her course. Hanamasha. I can see her rejoicing. And we said, look, I said, yes, I'm sad, but yet I'm glad. There's another general, another soldier. And go on in. Say yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Hey. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. How? Shatabasika. some joy. Woo! Woo! How?
Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Come on, church. Yes, yes. Mother Sacks will yes. be putting them up and putting them down. Yes, yes. Cool. Show them up. Yes. yes, 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 yes. Come on, praise yes. them now. Yes, yes, yes. Tell them yes. Yes, Lord, tell him, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Come on, give him some praise. Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. My God, my God. Come on, give God some praise. Everybody. Come on and give God some Woo. glory. Ho! Ho! Glory to your name, oh God. Yes, Lord. We give you praise and glory. Come on and thank God, everybody. To this great Bishop elect. Pastor Marvin Warnes. Hey, hey, hey. Ho! Ho! I hear the Lord saying, you ain't seen nothing yet. What he's about to do in your life is going to blow the world's mind. I feel another mantle and another weight coming on your life. And I hear the Lord say, give him praise now. Because what you see today, you won't see no more. But there's another power. Another strength coming in the Holy Ghost. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. Come on, praise him. Oh, come on, get on door. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, to the weather fools. To the Weatherspoon family. To the Stax family. Pastor Bennett, God bless you. To soul. for a few more minutes come on praise him just for a few more minutes he ain't finished come on and give us God some praise come on come on come on come on to the Weatherspoon family to the Stacks family to all of you in your prospective places to the pulpit yes to my apostle apostle God feel curling God bless you all yes Lord you know,
You know, you know, when we got the news about Dr. Stacks, we did what we was taught to do. We went straight in revival the very next night. And we was taught to head off grief, to hear what the Lord was saying about the matter. When you see a great general of this stature and leader going to be with the Lord, you got a lot of people who are hurting a lot of people in pain. The Lord told us to go into revival, and we did just that. We went into revival, and he, they quoted the scripture earlier about how precious in the sight of the Lord the death of his saints. And the Lord began to speak to me. He said, now, if you serve me, and I'm rejoicing, then why aren't you rejoicing? He began to say to me, when a man's legacy precedes his life, his works is complete, finished, done over he says she completed her works when god can get more glory from out of your death than he can your life then you have completed your work and your warfare has been accomplished that's what jesus did for us jesus did more for us in his death and resurrection than he did in his life here on the earth dr stacks did her work she finished her course and we have to do the same. We have to walk in the same love. We have to walk in the same place that she walked in her level of commitment. She was a defender of the faith. She stood for holiness. She never compromised. Come on and say amen, church. Come on and say amen. amen. And so today, we have experienced a lot sitting right there in those seats, in those seats where you're sitting. You have experienced a lot. The Lord reminded me on the way here in 2 Kings 13, 21, and I'm not finna preach, I'm just gonna give you this. That when they lowered the man down into the, into the tomb of Elijah, the man stood up on his, he was dead, and the dead man stood up on his feet. And God began to speak to me, he said, because I'm gonna honor this vessel and the life that she lived here on this earth, he said, and because she served me and I'm not unjust that I will forget her labor of love. He said, when you all go back to the doctors who are sick here unto death, you're going to have a different report. She stood for healing. She stood for deliverance. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, tell you today that many of you have been healed already. Many of you have been touched already. And the power of God has already hit your life sitting right there in those seats. And I want to encourage each and every one of you to continue to hold the charge. Continue to pray as I will continue to pray for you. God bless you. Well, I'm praising somebody. Listen, giving honor to Bishop Winans and to the clergy, to you, the people of God, to the Witherspoon family, to the Stacks family. We are praying for you and we're lifting you up, understanding that when you lose, there's a grief and that's understandable. But let me say this, we are here at a home going of a great general, someone that has stood the test of time and that have went through. She had fought a good fight, she had finished the course and she's kept the faith. Now it was the time for God to say rest. But I just have come to say this and I'm done. When I met Sister Stacks, I'm one of the originals. I don't know nothing about y'all. I'm, I'm one of the originals. And when I met Sister Stacks and Mother Boy, it was at the prayer tower. I got off of my knees and mother boy looked at me and said you don't know who you are but I know who you are 
Well, in my mind, I'm saying I'm Garfield Curlin. Because I was young and just coming in. And so Sister Stack said to me, you have gifts. Well, I don't know nothing about that. And so what Sister Stacks did, after a long time, we had a very unique relationship. We was no longer son and mother. We was like brother and sister. And so when we would eat together, we would talk. She would have these revelations. Some of them I understood and some of them I didn't. So I took her, it took her to reveal to me what God was actually saying to me. And the conversation that we had was powerful conversation. Because Sister Stax was only Sister Stax and she was very unique and there will be no other like Sister Stax. Now you can be in your own gift and you can be who you are, but Sister Stax is Sister Stax. And God wonderfully made her. But I'm going to close with this. After, because I always say this, you give it time will tell all. Time, if you give a thing time, it'll tell everything. And so the stacks now, uh, we grew further and further apart, but every now and then I'd pick up the phone. I would call her and she would call me. What are you doing? How are you doing? What is God saying? And I would say, what is God saying to you? And we would talk and then we would go on. But I say this because I woke up of the morning with this and I'm going. The Bible declared in 1 Kings 19 and 19 said that when Elijah went to Elijah's house, there he was plowing in the field. And the Bible said that Elijah took his mantle and laid it on him, which brought him into, automatically brought, drew him into an anointing and service. From plowing naturally to begin to plow naturally. But he didn't automatically do it. It took time. And every time Elijah told him, stay here he said no i can't stay here as long as god be my god i'm going with you in other words when the anointing touches you first it is to bring you in to the ministry it is to bring you in to your gift are you listening to me and so what god did through her it was to bring us in to teach us but what it did, if you can follow, notice he asked him, what can I do for you? And he says, give me a double portion of your anointing. He says, you ask a hard thing. Not that God couldn't do it because there's nothing too hard for God to do. But what he was saying is, if you can keep up, if you can stand the test of time, can have you stood the test of time? watch this now can did you stand the rebuke come on did you listen to the teaching did you go through did you handle your rebuke well so watch this if there's no touch then you can't meet when he go up because only the anointing can come up on you when she go up and the mantle fall and now you gotta pick it up look at somebody said i believe i'll pick it up now look at somebody else and said i believe i'll pick it up now now come on and praise him for an anointing that god has given to her to fall up on you that now you can come into full course of your ministry of your gifting is because of a woman like this that suffered that didn't mind leaving a mantle are you willing to pick it up or it's just conversation 
Look at your neighbor said, I believe I'll say yes now. Throw your head back and say, yes, God. Come on and rejoice in him now and come on and let's give God a praise for a general in the spirit. One that took the test of time, came through the test of time and received now in heaven. And now, let me tell you this, if this earthly body would be dissolved, she has another body that has not been made with hands. And if she could come back, she would come back. God bless you. Let's shout hallelujah. Say hallelujah again. Amen. Certainly we thank God for all of the remarks from the clergy. Amen. That have gone forth. At this time we're going to prepare for remarks from uh, our wonderful mother Mary Witherspoon. I think we should give her a hand clap. <laughs> Trying to handle a funeral of any size is a task but certainly one of this magnitude to make sure that we honor appropriately uh, a vessel of this magnitude amen i'm certain it was a quite laborious and so we thank god for mother mary and her strength at 80 years old y'all quiet in here to be able to have the strength to lay her sister to rest in such a beautiful way so we're going to receive her at this time let the church say amen i would like my daughter to come stand with me Both of them, both of my daughters will come stand with me. Denise, my daughter Denise, she's a usher and she wanted to do something. Thank you, Denise. This is a glorious occasion for me. They call us the daisies. And the last time that I talked with her, I looked back at my journal, and it was the 16th that I, they did really take care of me, you know that. Um, on the 16th, I looked back at my journal, and I saw that we had went out to, uh, I believe it was um, Golden Corral, not Golden Corral, but the original pancake. And she was the same. Nothing was wrong with her. Of course, you already know she had the uh, excited, what you call that, excited nerve? Sciatic. Sciatic nerve. And she was, we were just laughing, having a good time. And then after that, Sister Rudolph and uh, Sister Allen said, we hadn't heard from her. And so they, um, called her and they couldn't get to answer her to answer the phone and all this type of stuff so they she had to move out of her house because of the fire and that she had two floods so she was standing in a, one of those you know hotels and uh, had the kitchen all that kind of stuff and uh, we had to, uh, a wellness check and they went up and they hollered through the door and she never answered. And so she had the lock on the door. You know that thing you pull over? And they had to go get something to get it off. They have tools. And they got it off and they went in and found her. She was gone. And when she was laying on the back, like she just left. I want uh, Brother Dino, if he would come and read her last connection of time. He know Alan because he knows how to do this and I don't <laughs> and if you have a pencil and paper you might want to write it down but first of all before he come and read I got to apologize to you because I've been seeking the Lord to kill this heifer <laughs> do you know that you cannot repent until you see yourself 
And if you never get into the first class, you're going to hell. The first class, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If you don't know his righteousness, you're going to hell. Now, and I've been, I've been seeking him. <laughs> and they call me, it's, it's almost your prayer time. I forgot myself. Are you right? <laughs> they know my prayer time better than I do. But uh, doing this affair, I know they saw me. And I saw me. And I repented to them. Then the uh, uh, deacon, uh, Dr. Perry, <laughs> my daughter, always my daughter, she's my mother now. <laughs> and this one too. But anyway, I am so grateful. This has been a wonderful, I keep calling it a wedding because she's going to a wedding. And I have to, I want you to forgive me because I'm not hugging. I'll be 81 years old on the 15th of this month and I don't want to lay there right now. I got to take her, take care of her affairs. And when I stepped into these shoes, I done lost 10 pounds. There's some rough shoes up here. I've never been on this level with the clergy. You know, people up here are really off. I can't believe it. I'm, I'm, I, you know, I've been praying for the clergy, but I didn't know why until I stepped into these shoes. I said, people up here, they don't obey at all. But anyway, my daughter's trying to uh, get me to stop. But I'm not going to stop. <laughs> oh, God. But I'm, I'm so grateful. When I, get a, when I get a project, I always give it to God. And I don't take it back. I wait on him also. So if you worked in any capacity in this, this uh, going home, he's going to bless you because it's not me. Because I don't know what to do. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this here. I don't have but one sister. And this is the first for me. And I thank you, uh, what's that, uh, Lenise Dunlap. I thank all the ushers. They got their little uniforms and the praise team. I just love y'all. Y'all look so nice. And now I want to have Minister Dino. This is her last connection of time. She wrote it on her, I believe it's her birthday, when she turned 77. I come to the honor of uh, Mother Mary having me read this. Uh, you know, what is in love shall cover a multitude of sin. Amen. And then we got to pray one for another. <laughs> Let me see what she has here. God's number system for eight, for nine, eight, 2021, Dr. Stack's birthday. Uh, nine is the fruit of the spirit. Eight is new birthday. Two is separation for, from this world. Uh, zero has no time. Two is separated from the separated. Okay, one is unity, one with the Godhead. That you add all those up is 22, which is light on making manifest. Okay, we go uh, going to the second uh, column, which is uh, nine is the fruit of the spirit. Eight is a uh, new birth, a new beginning. 20 is redemption. Uh, re redeeming you. 21 is exceeding sinfulness of sin. You add all those up, it becomes 50, 58. It's, uh, 50 is uh, the, uh, the spirit of the Holy Ghost and P Pentecost. And 8 is new birth. You add 22 and 58, which is 80. You split those two, it's new birth and new beginning. Eight has no end. Uh, that's Dr. Stacks. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you.
I have one other thing I want to say uh, concerning Juanita Bynum. I wanted her to come and speak because she used to belong to Shalom, and that's where she got her anointing. And I think I kind of messed up. <laughs> and because of that, I'm the root. When I told them I couldn't find the insurance policy, I, I couldn't. I don't know what's going on. You know, I'm supposed to go first. <laughs> oh, I am four years older than my sister. And I wanted her to know Alicia called me and she, she we was talk we talk all the time. That's one of my babies. They started patting me on my back, but I'm gonna be through it in a minute. But Alicia's one of my babies. <laughs> And we talk all the time. And I was telling her, I got to go find the insurance policy. I did. It ain't no, it wasn't no secret. And I, we found it. Hello. It was, it was quick. You know, if this thing jumped on me, you know. And we did find it. But I thought it was nice of her to want to do something. Nobody else did anything like that. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. Whether she did it wrong or right. Nobody. And I thought it was really nice. She had a beautiful uh, uh, program. I was sleeping that day. I didn't know anything about it. She had never talked to me about it. I never talked to one in either Bible. And I was asleep. Somebody called me. I was delirious. I didn't know what was going on. I was so tired. And I have never really saw the whole tape as of yet. I'm going to take a look at it. But I want you to forgive me because I'm the root. God is not the author of confusion. Now, all the confusion that happened, you're against, you're against the scriptures. Because he said if you have an alt, you go to them and them alone. And you didn't do that. So you gotta, you gotta repent. <laughs> I'm gonna rest my case. I thank y'all very much. I love you. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, let's give Mother Mary a hand clap and her lovely daughters for assisting her. Hey, gentlemen, can you make your presentation? Before she uh, is released back to her seat, Pastor Terrell Cobb is coming to give her a very special presentation. Is he in the room still? All right. Love your smiling faces. Oh, here he is, right here. I loved hmm? our dear mother, Gertrude Stacks. Mother Mary and Shalom family. To our bishop, bishop elect, Captain. Marvin Winans, let's give him a hand. <laughs> Over the past couple months, I've been really sick and I had caught Mother Stax. I said, Mama, I said, I'm sick. She said, Terrell, what is the doctor saying? Put your mic to your mouth. Okay, yes ma'am. She said, Terrell, what is the doctor saying? And I said, they don't know. They just said, I'm in the last stage of my life. And she said, the devil didn't lie. She said, that ain't true. She said, tell the doctor to get you to another hospital. Tell him I said it. Say, Talk yes, loud. Talk loud. I said, yes, ma'am. And Mother Stax, she, she said, Terrell, she said, I'm going to tell you what's wrong with you. She said, the doctor's not going to understand it. She said, but listen. She said, where you had your surgery, she said, there's an infection behind your your pocket where they did your surgery she said tell them they have to clear 
the infection. She said, if they don't clear the infection, you will die. She said, but I told God to freeze it. She said, I told God to freeze it until you get to the U of M hospital. And when I got to U of M hospital, they noticed everything that she said. And I said, mother, this is what the doctor said. And she said, I told you it was there. And I tell them to clear it up and go home. <laughs> That's and all right. Mother Mary, you have been so faithful Thank and you. so diligent. Thank you so much. I've watched you over the years, nurse and everything yes. for everybody. Yes. And I wanted to present you with this lovely tapestry. And mother, come around here, mother. Isn't that beautiful? That's beautiful. And Thank you. It says, we hope that this tapestry blanket in some way helps to lessen the pain of your bereavement and strengthen the cherished memory of your loved one. Our life can be thought of as a tapestry with all of our relationships and experiences woven together to make that which is us. The image of your tapestry is woven with six individual colors green, blue, red, gold, black, and white. When we are young, we are like the green thread, learning as we go. Later, the blue sky fills our lives. In our prime, we progress and grow like the red thread. And then we enter our golden years. In the end, the darkness gives way to the light during the final part of our journey, this life tapestry tribute is for Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Love you much. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. One of the, one of the things uh, before I go, because I'm not hugging you, is because I'm old. And that disease is taking old folks out. I don't mean to offend you. I'm, I'm not asking you to forgive me. Okay? All right. <laughs> Come on, let's give Mother Mary a hand clap. Amen. We thank God for her. Let us keep her in our prayers. Amen. And what God will continue to strengthen her through the rest of this journey. Amen. How many have enjoyed this celebration of life on today? Amen. And we're so thankful that the time has, amen, drawn near for the word of God. The Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word will stay forever. Amen. And so we're so thankful today, amen, for Bishop-elect Marvin L. Winans, who's going to come, amen, and give us this eulogy, this homily on today in celebration of the life of this woman of God. Before he comes, we're going to have a musical presentation uh, from the Winans family. We do want to acknowledge the presence of Mother Winans, who is here. I think she's sitting amen, behind us. God bless you. We thank God for her. Amen. I do want to say before uh, Michael and Regina comes uh, to give presentation, musical presentation, that uh, there is a QR code. If you did not get a um, a program or an, uh, an, uh, a program today, you can scan the QR code. It's in the back of the church, um, and you can pull it up on your electronic apparatus. All right, at this time, we're going to have uh, the musical presentation followed by the Word of God by Bishop-elect Marvin L. Winans. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We will stand when he approaches the podium. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We count it a pleasure to be here for the Witherspoon's family, Stack's family, is our family, the Winans family. I'm standing here with my wife. I think she has a couple of words for her. Dr. I just, Dr. I just want to say, Mother Stacks, you, were, you will be highly missed. I thank you for every hanky that you tied around my neck. I thank you for every word of prophecy that you spoke over my life and over my family's life. Take your rest, Mother of Zion. 
Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not as thou hast been. Thou forever will be summer and winter, springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Joy of thy word that bringeth light and life and we pray that the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ would shine bright as always may the people be blessed by thee and never impressed by me cause through the revelation of thy word these thy people to see you more clearly to love you more dearly and to follow you more nearly and now Lord let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, and every glad heart said, Amen. 
You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your endurance. Um, if you have to leave, go now. I'm not going to preach long. But I want to focus your attention. It is very difficult in a service like this to have the task of the homily. The homily differs from eulogizing because that is what all of you have done. The job of the homilist is to say a word from the Lord. I want to give honor to all of these bishops, all of these pastors. I mean, we could have went in after Mother Dupree. Could have been over. And everybody would have understood. Hallelujah. Um, I want you to know I can hold with the rest of them. With the best of them. Hey! Now, that's real. I got it authentically. I never seen Dorothy look so much like Motherboard in all my life to tonight, to today. And I remember when she was a teenager, her and her sister Hattie. They would come to 2135 Mac Avenue, and them girls could dance. Me and Ronald would just sit over and say, look at that, go Hattie and Dorothy. Their father, Elder Albert Boyd, and mother, when Elder Winan would get up, he called us Sister Stacks. Cause, I mean, Sister Boyd, because he was that much older. My message, Let's go. I, I'm going to, I know how to preach. I told Bishop Murray, um, I could preach in 10 minutes. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to, if you give me 15 minutes, we'll be on our way out of here. The word of the Lord comes from the book of uh, Haggai 2 and 3. Hear the beginning of the reading of God's word. Who is left among you? That saw this house in her first glory. And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing. So far the text. For the next fleeting moments, I want to deal with a two-word subject in two parts. The first part, would you look at your neighbor and ask the question, say, neighbor, who's left? I've seen some things in my time. Uh, who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? I've seen some things. I praise God for not only being born, but for the time in which I was born. I was born during a time of transition. My great-grandfather, Elder I. W. Winan, was born March 3rd, 1875. He was born during the Reconstruction period of this country, and he was saved in the early 1900s and was a first fruit of that Azusa Street Revival. In 1919, he migrated to the city of Detroit 
because he said the Lord told him to come. And he came without much money. No one had asked him. He didn't know where he was going to stay. He came without a formal education or any assistance from the parent body of the Church of God in Christ. But he came. And the Lord sustained the work and in 1929 he built the first state temple of the Church of God in Christ in Michigan. It's still in existence today. Upon the completion of 2135 Mac Avenue, the church went on a consecration where they prayed and fasted that God would manifest himself in their midst. In specificity, Elder Winan prayed and he prayed to God that if someone would even fall sick to whatever disease, if they would just turn toward Mac Avenue, that God would heal them. And God did just that. I forget the name of the brother that was in a hospital, and he told the nurses, turn me toward 2135 Mac. And God raised him up. I've seen some things. I've heard some teachings that today would almost seem off. But to grow up in such a rich environment of the saints, it's a priceless attribute to one's spiritual journey. To hear and to see saints that testify of how God healed them miraculously without the aid of medicine or intervention of doctors. It increases the faith of the hearer. I have a tape of Elder Winan. I have several, when he's talking to Mother Boyd, Sister Boyd, I think these women want to be like you. <laughs> Elder Weatherspoon, Elder Stacks reading for Elder Wine, and my father reading, and the saints, and he got up and he said, I want to ask you all a question. Is the hospital for God's folks or is it for the devil's folks? It got quiet just like he's, and he started laughing. He said, Lord, they help me. These folks go to the hospital. He said, I was born March 3rd, 1875. It ain't a pain in my body. And if I got sick today, I'd have to go ask, where is my God? Because God told me he'd take sickness off of me and put it on them that hate me. And I believe God. I say this because I've seen some things. My eldest brother, David, he was around 12 years old and his appendix burst. And he had been at home and we had no idea what was wrong. Mama took him to the hospital. They found out that his appendix had ruptured. And they went and operated. They operated once. They thought they got all of the poison, but they didn't. So they said, we got to go back in. They went in again. And when they came out the next time, they checked it and said, no, we got to go in again. And my father said, no. And he called for Elder Stacks and Elder Weatherspoon. I'm just saying, I've seen some things, that's all. And 
they came to the hospital and got on their knees and prayed and said, now, Lord, hear the prayers of his grandfather. And God raised him up. I just want to know who's left. Uh, what also happened was the fact that I've seen men and women that lived holy. They were our examples. I know you can't do that today, but they used to tell you how to dress. Half y'all in here wouldn't have been considered saved. I don't hear nobody talking to me. They told us as men how long our hair should be. Elder Stacks told Keith, said, if you, if you cut your hair, God will give you the Holy Ghost. He went and cut his hair and God gave him the Holy Ghost. My father used to wear a process. Elder Winer looked over and said, Lord, to help him, look like cows been licking in his head. <laughs> they would have sisters meeting and tell you, you can't wear that. I don't hear nobody. It got real quiet right in there. Look at somebody and say, I've I seen some things. I've seen some things. But as a result, uh, there were many seemed like with regularity what was called then All Saints Meetings, where just the saints came so they could kill disturbances that was going on in the church. I know y'all don't know nothing about that, but I, I seen some things. In order for the spirit to not be a show, you have to have a relationship not only with God, but with your brother. All this quickening don't mean nothing if you can't talk to the person sitting next to you. Would you help me preach? Tell your neighbor, I done seen something. I was 13, 14, 15 years old, saving my money so I could go travel to get where Mother Boyd was. I was a teenager. Me and Ronald would save our money and go to wonderful places like Decatur. That's where I met Stan, a brother man. That's where I met him. He, 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 was, he was a teenager back then. We'd go to those fun-filled retreats like Terry Holt, Indiana. Peoria, Illinois. I don't hear nobody talking to me. Champaign, Urbana. <laughs> yes, sir, I, I, I seen some things. I watched Mother Boyd and her sister Martha when she lived in Decatur. I preach Mother Boyd's daughter, hey, uh, not Hazel, uh, Hattie, not Hattie, Nettie, Nettie. She looked just like Mother Boyd. All right, I'm moving on. But there were relationships. And I remember Mother sitting there, she said, y'all, we were sitting, sitting out there because, you know, and, and Gert was with us, Mother Stax was with us, and... You know, we just felt like we was the only one that had the real anointing. I ain't throwing off. I'm just telling the truth. Y'all weren't the first ones that thought that. <laughs> 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 
So we were sitting there and we were talking about, yeah, did you see that happen in that church? Did you see that? Mother was sitting there. She said, y'all shut your mouth. Y'all sitting over there acting. Except your righteousness is see that of the scribe and Pharisee. What you doing? He said, yes, ma'am. That's, that's the end of that conversation. We ended that. We went in the houses. Because the saints didn't stay in hotels. Me and Ronald were sitting there. And we were sitting at this person's house. And mother boy was there. And all of a sudden, a roach ran across the table. It was going for my plate. And the original, so you know if one's there, there's more than one there. They don't, they don't, roaches don't travel by themselves. And so we were sitting there and I was like, and, and mother looked at you, you better shut your mouth. Said, mother, what I'm supposed to do? The roaches is coming. She was so wonderful. She killed that roach and said, keep eating. <laughs> I'm not making this up. I've seen some things. I saw where, and I'm, I'm, I'm coming to my clothes. I, I, I haven't done the text justice. But I saw where, Mother Russell, who used to always be with Mother Boyd, and we were over there at Conant, and uh, Mother had this beautiful dress, because she didn't used to wear white all the time. And she had this beautiful dress, and Mother was just beautiful to me. And I knew her when her hair was black and down her back. And she got up one time and said, a man come telling me I'm beautiful. I said, I saw myself when I got up this morning. <laughs> hey! You had to put a hay on the end of everything. <laughs> and so, I saw a mother that my mother was in love with. See, we, Garfield was almost, Pastor Garfield, I'm sorry, I was an apostle. We got so many names and titles. So many. Used to just be brother and that was enough, but now, I understand. I, I'm not, I don't mean to speak disrespectful. Because I honor him. He's a great man of God. And I met them in, in Gary, yeah, at the prayer time. Um, I saw a mother that because she had natural children, mother had seven, eight, seven children. Mother Boyd had seven children, natural, biological children. And uh, she cared for her spiritual children like she cared for her natural children. I would go and never worried about, no matter how the rebuke came, she would always say, you don't rebuke nobody if you ain't going to heal them. So matter, no matter how hard the rebuke came, she healed you. I seen some things. I saw mother. We were in Decatur at Pastor Newman's church. And a young man was just jumping up. You know, she was laying hand. Mother grabbed him and said, sit down, you clowning made them sit down then afterwards she had she said we're gonna have express yourself night that meant you testify what God did for you so mother Russell was up there 
And they asked the young man, and she sat down and said, you got something to say? He said, no, y'all said I was clowning. <laughs> Me and Ronald almost didn't make it. <laughs> so we were at, at, at Aunt Martha's house, and Mother Russell came down, and her and Mother Boy was just talking. And she said, I ain't never seen so many folks. Bishop Cass is there. I did to just dancing with their hips, just all out there dancing with their hips. You don't dance with your hips, you dance with your feet. She said, I don't know where they got that from. Mother Russell right on cue said, from the TV, mother. <laughs> I saw mother walk into 2135 Mac Avenue and change the trajectory of that ministry. Uh, Pastor Garfield, he said he was the first, but actually, mother had some sons and daughters before us. My mother, uh, Larry Mann, uh, Bobby Glenn, uh, Sonny Clifton, Junior Jones, Leon White. She had so many daughters. And even, y'all remember Brother Russell? He would sit up, Mother Boy was so organized, she had the fellowship prayer band. And all of them had badges, but they weren't like round, they were silver. Like I used to think, Brother Russell was a, was a cop because he sat there with that prayer band on. I said, he gonna arrest somebody. <laughs> she had children in Grand Rapids and all over Chicago. And I watched those young people, Brother Delbert, and they were our mentors. And we would come to church on the fourth Friday night, I believe it was, hoping that the fellowship was in town. And God healed. And God saved. And God anointed and put a depth of desire to be saved. Not to be a wonder, but to be saved. Hallelujah. I'm closing now. I'm not finished. In our text, Zerubbabel is a descendant of the Davidic lineage. Seems in this text he is always accompanied by Joshua, who is a high priest. And he says, Who is left? among you that have seen this house in her first glory not trying to mimic not trying to imitate but who's left that saw it that saw it that saw it young girl in Pennsylvania name was Sarah body was deformed bones that doctors told her she would never have any children and mother and mother Russell were there and they had a great revival at Elder Davis's church God birthed out prophets and prophetesses. she said Lord we need a miracle they called for Sarah, who's still alive today. And the anointing came on and they could, they would beat her back. Mother told me, she said, I could hear the bones cracking. And when they finished, the girl stood straight up. I said, I seen something. Who is left? I'm getting ready to turn the corner. That's the reason, no matter how popular things may be, I 
can't preach what they preaching. Folk will try to make you feel like you think you're the only one saved. I said, no, I ain't the only one saved, but I seen something. I know the Holy Ghost. I said, I know the Holy Ghost and I know when it's authentic, when it's real. I don't need no fake prophet trying to guess my name. I know my name. I know my address and where I live. If you're going to tell me what God said, tell me what God said. And then after you tell me, I have the right to believe it or not believe it. Because I done seen something. I don't mean to put you out. And I don't mean to make you feel like it's all over. Because when we look at the next seven verses, the fourth verse says, Yet now be strong. Oh, Zerubbabel. Saith the Lord, be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high people, and be strong, all ye people of the land. Saith the Lord, for I am with you. Saith the Lord of hosts. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. I may not have been there, but I'm here. And since I'm here, I got to learn how to be strong in the Lord. Because guess what he said? He said, and I will shake all nations and the desire of nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory saith the Lord of hosts lift up your hands and say Lord fill the house with glory people will try to make you feel bad try to compare your shot with their shot they tried to tell me that I had left God and I had left the fellowship and I had left the anointing and one day I was at home and I said uh, I got to call mother I called mother and say mother set your hat now unless you know mother you don't know what that means that means get ready because I'm coming to pick you up and I picked up mother and we got in the car and I took her to my house and we sat up in the bedroom all day eating shrimps and Chinese food. Skeet and coconut was little with Vicky and Vicky gave her a bunch of hats. And so I'm taking her home. And I looked over and she was crying. And I said, mother, why are you crying? She said, I ain't going to believe nothing they tell me no more. I said, what they tell you? They told me you didn't love me no more. And you didn't. I said, mother boy. How am I not going to love you and everything I got is because of you? She said, I ain't going to believe it. I said, don't believe it. Ooh, I called Ronald so fast when he got out the car, when she got out the car. So I know folks will talk about you. But I have a promise. Give me the B flat and I'm going home. I said, I got a promise. Oh, I got a promise. And let me tell you what the promise is. The promise is that the glory of the latter house is greater than the glory of the former house. Ah, Lord, 
God, uh, I need somebody to recognize. I've seen some things. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've seen some things, uh, but I ain't seen nothing yet. I have not seen. Ears have not heard. Yes, lift your hand and say, Lord, give me the latter rain. Send the latter rain, the latter rain of your anointing, the latter rain of your spirit, the latter rain of your gift today. Send the latter rain. Ah! We need the rain. You're going to do it in every city. You're going to do it in every place. Yes. 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 Everybody tell him yes. message were in two parts one is a question who's left the last one is a statement look at somebody and tell them I'm left and so many times we look at what we've lost and we don't look at what we have left but I'm left everyone standing as the I want to pray as we prepare to go to the cemetery I love sister stacks mother stacks was like a sister to me and uh, the last time I saw sister Mary was in the aforementioned original house of pancakes and I went in and I, as they were sitting me, I was there by myself. And I looked over and I saw illegal lady McCaskill. But that's not what I said. I said, there go Bumpy. That's the name that I call her. Because I remember when she got saved. And I remember when the the Allen and Sister Rudolph got saved. Whoo, they were something. Because they didn't understand what was going down. And I was their youth leader. And they came to me. We was at, at Midland and Murlin, and They had just come in. And, and they said, Minister Marvin. have to stay at Shalom we're saved do we have to stay at Shalom and I looked at him and I said no not really but you should stay until you get the Holy Ghost that's another thing <laughs> the Holy Ghost I mean, do we have to do all of that and fall out of I just went to laughing. I said, no, but you should stay till you get it. Now look at him. And, and brother, where, which one of y'all married to Dennis? Dennis, that's a, where Dennis? Wave your hand, Mr. Cool. His cousin lived across the street from us, Daryl Clark. And he would come over his cousin's house. And I was at my house across the street, and they, they called me over so I could preach to him. 
And so I went over there, we was teenagers, and I went to preach and I said, y'all need Jesus. And he was laughing, they was cracking up. And I told them about God. And just, they just went to laugh. And when I finished, I said, now y'all can laugh, but if what I said is true, I'm going to heaven and y'all going to hell. And I went on across the street. Look at them now. It's, it's amazing. I want us to recognize that what Sister Stacks became, and we watched it. I heard someone say, it might have been Mother Dupree, that we watched the stages happen. And some things, as Apostle Curlin said, I, Mother, Bo Mother Stacks go to saying stuff, I said, look, I don't know what you're talking about. And I ain't trying to find out, but I'm going to sit here and let you finish telling me all this. But the last time we were together, I saw Lumpy, and right in my mind, I said, if Lumpy is here, Sister Stacks got to be here. And I looked across the thing, and there she was. And I said, hey! And they had finished their breakfast. And they came over, and I was so happy to see them. And they stayed till I finished my breakfast. And she showed me the pictures of her in India, praying for folk and God healing people. And right there in that restaurant, I looked at her and I said, Mother Stacks, Mother Boyd is proud of you. Thank you for continuing. And I didn't know that would be the last time that would ever, I would ever see it. But the promise of God is I'll never leave you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Never forsake you. No matter what you're going through. your hands if you believe that God's going to be with us. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we commit them unto you and unto your care. Let us remain true to holiness, to the anointing of God. In Jesus' name, if you're happy that you're left, I want you to give God praise right there. Come, come, come. Forty women that will line up in the center aisle to my right your left 40 ladies that will serve as flower bearers if you would come real quick just join me and I need just line up 40 one two three four five six let's get ready to serve join me right here in the center aisle and we need two gentlemen and, and two gentlemen okay Come on, ladies. Let's give God praise. Just as soon as you get there, turn around, turn around. You want to form one line, so as they give it to you, one can go up and the other can come down. Ah. 
I'll never leave you. Gentlemen, that will come quickly. I'll be with you. One more gentleman. serving as pallbearers, would you come at this time? Process. Bishop Bishop Blackman is going to give you how to do that so that we don't congregate. Amen. Thank you so much, wonderful people of God. We're going to move quite expeditiously. We're going to ask. Okay, after the family, you will remain standing. Let's let the clergy go after and then the family will follow
follow Shalom Fellowship and then as you can follow him now after the family go ahead you can go ahead two all right Shalom the two sides are to remain we're trying to eliminate congestion please stay in your seats Shalom you can exit now We have to move quick. Yeah. 